Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a 200 watt inverter from Ysolex. And it's not made for your house, it's made for your car. So let's go ahead and open it up and see if it's worth the money. Alright, let's open this up. And you can see that there's not much to it, it is just the 200 watt inverter with a cigarette lighter adapter attached and a small user manual. And first impressions of this inverter, um, it is made out of plastic. Uh, it looks like there is an on off button right here. There are two AC receptacles. It says that it will power at 110 volts. And then on the side it has um, three USB A's. Two of them are the standard uh, 2.4 amp 5 volt. And then we have a quick charge which is a 18 watt, and then we have a USB-C, which is a 20 watt. On the back, it does show all the information about the model number, the input, uh, the output, and the types of USBs on the unit. And then also, it does have a cigarette lighter, adapter, and it looks like it does have a fuse inside, so we'll see what the size of fuse that is. Now, a little point of information about this is when I saw it, I really wanted to... Uh, get my hands on this just because first of all it's only a little over $25. I think like on Amazon right now it's like $25.99 which is pretty cheap for an inverter. But you're not looking at this as a off-grid power supply. You know you're not you're not going to be getting uh, pure sine wave or anything like that nor do you need it with something this small. With something like this this has a very specific responsibility in your car and it is to charge up your phones and tablets and it's really made for charging up your laptops. So that's kind of what we're gonna be testing. And also uh, seeing if there's other things that we can plug into it to see uh, well, actually how efficient it is and to see if it will power these other devices. And another thing about this device is that it is 200 watts. And if you know anything about cigarette lighter ports in vehicles, they usually only have uh, 10 amp fuses in them. So if you multiply 12 volts by 10 amps, you're getting 120 watts. So this unit is not really made to be able to power all the way up to 200 watts. It's really made to power 120 watts, but it does give you that leeway, so that way you're not burning up the unit when you're powering something uh, that's, that's 10 amps. Okay, I just unscrewed the uh, cap on this... Uh, on this cigarette lighter adapter and it is not fused it, it's, it's hardwired directly to the plug so this is not going to protect you at all when it comes to how much power you're trying to push through this inverter but like I said before most most cigarette lighter adapters in cars and any vehicles will be either 10 or 15 amps but it actually would have been nice if this was fused that way you could just change out the fuse in this in case it went out and not have to change the fuse in your car, which is sometimes more cumbersome. Okay, to be testing this unit, here is gonna be my cigarette lighter from my car. This is going to be my power source. It's just a mock-up, so I can do all my testing on my bench. But I'm gonna be using the cigarette lighter adapter on this Blue Eddy EB3A, and it runs at uh, 12 to 13 volts at 10 amps. So we'll be able to see how much power is being drawn from this device, maybe, maybe be able to calculate some efficiency measures, and we'll be able to know if we overload this device uh, and see what happens when we overload this, if anything happens or if it just shuts off, something like that. So that way I'm not switching out the fuses in my car all the time. So what I'm gonna be powering is first, I'm gonna be plugging in my phone, I'm gonna be plugging in just a simple 10 inch tablet. Then I will be using the AC source to plug in my laptop and we're gonna see if all that can be powered at the same time. And then we might uh, switch out the laptop and plug in this uh, heated blanket right here. It's an AC heated blanket. And then what else I have is a 200 watt heater to kind of max it out to see just what happens when you, when you throw as much power that the inverter can actually pull out. So. So that's kind of what we're going to be throwing together. So let's go ahead and start charging phones, tablets, and plug in that laptop. Okay, my power source is on, so let's go ahead and plug it in. 
And when you plug it in, you press the button, and what we get is a blue light, and that's all. So that's how you know this thing is powered on. Next, we're gonna go ahead and check the AC voltage to make sure that we're getting our 110 volts. And without any load, we're actually getting 117.9 volts. So that's really good. And it looks like the standby consumption on this unit, when I turn it on, the EV3A shows three watts. So this isn't something that you would wanna have plugged in to your car all the time because it will slowly uh, deplete your, your car battery. Um, so you don't wanna have this on overnight or if you go to the airport and go somewhere or when it's really cold because this does do a little bit of drain while it's plugged in. So let's go ahead and plug in to the USB-C and charge up my phone. There we go, we are now fast charging with my phone and it's using 18 watts. Next, let's go ahead and charge up this tablet. And we're gonna go ahead and use the fast charger on there. All right, tablet is now starting to charge up. And we are now using between 28 and 29 watts. Okay, the next thing we're gonna charge is my laptop. And that's what this thing is really made for, is to be able to charge up your electronic devices, which includes laptops. So let's go ahead and plug this in. My kilowatt also does read 117 volts. We went ahead and plugged in the laptop power brick. And let's plug in the laptop. Okay, and as you can see, this 200 watt inverter, it's easily handling charging a laptop, uh, charging a phone, and charging a tablet all at the same time. So let's go ahead and open up this laptop and turn it on, see if it will draw more power. And with the laptop on, it's still only using 79 watts. So you could easily use your laptop and charge up the tablet and the phone all simultaneously with this small little unit. And honestly, not that efficiency matters with this little unit, but I do want to show you that the Blue Eddy is showing that the output is 53 watts while charging this laptop, and that's it. It's not charging the phones or the tablets anymore. But the kilowatt does show that it's it's using 41.8 to 42 watts. So you're looking at a loss of 10 watts right there. Which, when you're converting from DC to AC, that is going to happen. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is what if you had a heating blanket uh, and you don't have a DC heating blanket, you have an AC one that was at your house that you just brought with you in order to stay warm. Well, this 200 watt well, this 200 watt uh, inverter actually powered this, this heating blanket. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And we're gonna set this heating blanket on high. Okay, well, I, um, I plugged in, hey, let me do it again. I plugged in the heating blanket into this inverter. And as soon as I plugged it in and turned on the heating blanket, I get an F3 warning. I think that basically says that there's not enough power going to the, uh, to the heating blanket. And I was curious on what the wattage is for this heating blanket. So let's go ahead and plug it directly into the EB3A. And you can see that the output is actually 138 watts. So I wouldn't plan on uh, using a heating blanket, an AC heating blanket, uh, with this device. Even though um, it's showing that it can power, it's, it's powering with 134 watts, um, either this device or the cigarette lighter adapter won't let you power that much load. And it kind of makes me wonder if it's the device because uh, the light is still on. So that means that the, the cigarette lighter port never tripped. That makes me wonder if, uh, if it can actually power 200 watts, which again, it shouldn't. It should only power, for the most part, 120 watts because you're working with a 12 volt, 10 amp uh, port, but there is a possibility of getting up to 180, and I don't know if this device can actually do it. So I'm thinking that it is definitely not gonna power this uh, little 200 watt portable heater right here, but let's go ahead and try it anyway, just to see what happens. And it seems like it's, it's trying, it's using about 50 watts. But this little, this little heater's not doing anything. There's no fan. 
There's no heat, no nothing. Okay, so that little test kind of makes me wonder how much power can you actually push through this thing? I mean, it says it's 200 watts. So what I've got here is I've got an eight amp charger. So uh, let's go ahead and start this charger. Output is now 63. Oh, and it just turned off. Let's try two amps. Okay, so with this, we're doing 50 watts. Let's go ahead and charge up the tablet and the phone again. Let's see if it, what it does when we keep on going. Okay, the output from the Blue Eddy is now 118 watts. So that's right at um, the 12 volts at 10 amps. Okay, it's been charging at two amps. It's been charging my phone, charging the tablet, and charging the laptop all at the same time for about three minutes now. And it's been pushing 116 watts. And this thing isn't really hot at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this. Try to boost some more power out of it. Oh, and it overloaded, look at that. The light is now red. So honestly, this thing, I, I, I don't think there's any way that it's a 200 watt inverter. Yeah, this thing seems to struggle uh, right around the 120 watt mark. So right at the 10 amp mark. Okay, so what do I think of the Y Solex 200 watt AC inverter? Well, it does exactly what it's intended to do. And that is to be able to charge up your phones, to charge up your tablets, and to be able to charge up your laptops with the AC plugs in the front. Now, don't expect this thing to go overboard just because it says 200 watts. I think theoretically, it might be able to do 200 watts, but I couldn't get it to power over 115 to 120 watts before the unit itself uh, went into like some sort of fault mode. Which is actually kind of a good thing because most cars only come with 12 volt, 10 amp ports. So that can only give you 120 watts max before you're in danger of blowing out the fuse in your car. The benefits about this is look how small it is. It's really small. It can just go in your glove compartment. Um, and it's very lightweight. You know, you won't even know it's there until you absolutely need it. It does have all the ports that you need, especially the AC ports for those laptops. Um, it does have a fan on the side to keep the unit cool. Um, and the cord is about 15 inches long, so that's long enough uh, to be able to plug into your car. Okay, so if you have any questions about this Y Solex 200 watt AC inverter, please leave them in the comments. I'll leave a link to this in my description, uh, just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day. Bye-bye.